Hello. Today we will be beginning one of a series of sections on a study in math known as trigonometry, or as it's called on the streets, trig. It's the study of the relationships between triangles' side lengths and their angle measures. So what we're going to start with is just dealing with right triangles. Uh, we'll branch off into other kind of triangles down the road. In this section and in all the on oncoming sections, the angle names are going to be given by uppercase letters and then side names are going to be given by lowercase letters. And you'll want to use that notation in your answers so that we're all speaking the same language. All right, so there's a, a little bit of vocabulary that goes into trig. Actually, there's quite a bit of vocabulary. So we're going to spend this first video just talking about vocab. For every, for every angle, there is a side that is opposite that angle. Specifically, the side opposite an angle is the side that is across from that angle. Or another way of putting it, it's the side that is not involved in forming the angle. For instance, here's angle A. It is made up of side AC and side AB. Therefore, its opposite side would be side CB. What is the side opposite angle B? Angle B is made up of side AB and side CB. So the side opposite angle B would be this side, side AC. This opposite side, side AC, could also be named using just a lowercase b because side B is opposite angle B. So here we see that same triangle ABC Except this time we've drawn in the lowercase letters that represent the side, the side names of each side. So opposite angle A is side A. Opposite angle B is side B. Opposite the right angle, angle C, is side C. And it's that, the opposite side of the right angle, we want to focus on next. Um, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is simply the side that's opposite from the right angle. Angle C is the right angle. The side opposite is side C over here. That makes side C the hypotenuse. So again, side C is not involved in forming angle C. That's what makes it the opposite of angle C. And if they ask you, well, and what's the hypotenuse of this triangle, like we said, it would be side C. So we've talked opposites, we've talked hypotenuse, the side adjacent to an angle in a right triangle is the side that does help form the angle but is not the hypotenuse. Uh, for example, the side adjacent to angle A in this triangle, well, here's angle A, it's made up of this side and this side, sides B and C. The adjacent side is attached to angle A, so it's one of these two sides to eliminate one of them. We say, well, wait a minute, this, this is already the hypotenuse. That makes the remaining attached side the adjacent side. So side small b is the adjacent side to angle A. The side adjacent to angle B, well, here's angle B. It's formed by sides A and C. So the adjacent side will be one of those two options. Again, we can eliminate side C. That's already the hypotenuse. That makes side A the adjacent side relative to angle B. Avoid using the right angle when we talk about, when we talk about adjacent and opposite because things get a little inbred. Because if you're like, OK, well, here I am on the right angle. What's the opposite side? Oh, it's this thing. OK, now what's the hypotenuse? Oh, wait, that's also this thing. OK, so what's the adjacent side? Is it this or this? Well, eliminate the one that's the hypotenuse. Wait a minute, neither one's the hypotenuse. Ah, so it, it gets really muddled. So we, we avoid that 90 degree angle when we talk about adjacents and opposites. There's going to be two acute angles on the triangle. Those are the kind of angles we, we use when we're talking about, oh, what's adjacent to this or what's opposite this. Um, so avoid working off that 90 degree angle to avoid uh, confusion in, in these terms. All right, so uh, let, let's kind of put it all together, what we've done so far in this example. We want to figure out the hypotenuse of this triangle. Well, here we have angle L 
being the, the right angle. So the side across from it will be the hypotenuse. That's up here. I'm going to label that with a lowercase l. It's by cursive, if you're wondering what that is. Um, the side adjacent to angle r. Well, all right. Here is angle r. It's made up of this side and this side. Uh, since L is the hypotenuse, that makes this side the adjacent to R. So I'm going to use a lowercase p because it's across from angle p. And then the side adjacent to angle p, this will be a lowercase r because it's across from angle r. So these are the two sides that make up angle p. The, the side that is adjacent to angle p is side lowercase r. It just so happens there's certain ratios that occur in every single right triangle. That, that's what the whole study of trig is about. And you can use these ratios to help you find missing pieces, missing side lengths or missing angle measures of a triangle if you at least know some of the side lengths or some of the angle measures. Um, so just to get a little more vocab down before we uh, delve into all that, uh, these ratios have names. The sine of an angle, S-I-N-E. So if, if you're working off one of the acute angles, the sine of the angle is the length of the side opposite the angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse for the triangle. There is a cosine as well. Um, that is, again, using one of the acute angles in the triangle, you can take the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So we've gotten one ratio that uses opposite and hypotenuse um, with the adjacent sitting out. We've got another ratio that uses adjacent and hypotenuse with the opposite sitting out. So now let's take the two things that have sat out and make a ratio out of that. That's basically the, the thought process they went through when they were defining all these. And uh, the result is what's known as the tangent of some angle is the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. So here the hypotenuse sits out in this ratio. So there's three different ratios um, because each one has one side that's not being used. In math, we like to abbreviate things. The abbreviations for these ratios, sine, if uh, S-I-N-E is just simply too long to write, um, you can always use you know, S-I-N. We always include an angle with every sine or cosine and tangent. If you don't, it's just a sin, literally. It's just S-I-N. Um, so we, you can take, if you're talking about the sine of an angle, you can call that S-I-N, X. Cosine of an angle, use C-O-S of the angle. And tangent of an angle is simply T-A-N, X, a tangent of some angle. You'll probably see these buttons on your calculator without uh, having to look too hard for them. We're going to be using them quite a bit in the upcoming days. Um, a lot of people like to use a mnemonic to help you to help them remember what each ratio means. And the mnemonic is so, S-O-H, ka, C-A-H, toa, soka toa. The S, the C, and the T stand for sine, cosine, and tangent. And then the two letters that follow each one stand for you know, either opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, or opposite over adjacent. So you can use Sokotoa uh, to help you remember what ratio name uses which sides. So here it is again, just typed up neater. So means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, so some examples using these vocab terms. We want to figure out what the sine of m is. Notice they don't just say, what's the sine? They say, what's the sine of an angle? I can't emphasize enough how important that is and how frequently it's overlooked. You can't just have sine. It's got to be sine of something. It's like how I couldn't ask you on a quiz, hey, what's 1 plus? And you'd be sitting there going, 1 plus what? I'd be like, no, man, 1 plus, what is it? It doesn't make any sense. In a similar way, it wouldn't be fair for me to just say, what's sine? You'd be like, well, sine of what angle? So as you're writing these, always be in the habit, if you, if you write S-I-N, if you write C-O-S, if you write T-A-N, make sure you're immediately following that with either an angle name or some degree measure of the angle. Rant over. Okay, 
of sine of angle M. So here's angle M. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's the so. In this case, the opposite side is the side, again, not involved in forming angle M. That would be side small m. The hypotenuse is going to be opposite the right angle, which would be side h. So it's small m over small h. They don't give us any numbers to work with, so that's really as good of an answer as we can provide. The tangent of angle w. Well, angle w is up here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's the toa part of soka toa. The side opposite angle W is the side not involved in forming angle W, which is side lowercase w. The adjacent side is either M or H then. And since H is the hypotenuse, M gets to be the adjacent side. All right, well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's angle W. Its adjacent side, we know of already, is side lowercase m. And the hypotenuse, we already know, is side h. And there's your cosine ratio for that particular angle. Let's do one with numbers. Uh, sine of angle b. Well, here's angle b. Its sine comes from the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The opposite length from angle B is this thing, it's 3. And the hypotenuse on this triangle is 5, because that's what's opposite from the right angle. So 3 fifths would be the sine of angle B. Tangent of angle A, tangent is uh, toa. So opposite over adjacent. Here is angle A. Its opposite side would be, uh-oh, we don't have the opposite side. All right, well, we can get it, though. We can get it. We can figure out the opposite side, because if you know two of the three sides of a right triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem to get the remaining side. So we have uh, a squared plus b squared is c squared. That works for right triangles, which this is. a squared, we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. b squared, here's b. Its opposite side is 3, so that's 3 squared. It is c squared. c is the hypotenuse length, so that's 5 squared. So a squared plus 9 equals 25. Subtract away the 9 from both sides, and you get a squared by itself on the left. 25 minus 9 is 16 on the right. So a squared is 16. Uh, get rid of the second power by applying the square root to both sides. Technically, it's, it's plus and minus uh, 4. But since you can't have a negative distance, we'll just stick with the positive 4. So now I know this is 4. And now this, that makes this question a lot easier. Um, the opposite side of angle A is the side of length 4. The adjacent side to angle A is either 3 or 5. Oh, wait a minute, 5 is the hypotenuse. So it's got to be 3. And the cosine of angle A, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's angle A. The adjacent side we already know is 3. The hypotenuse we've talked about already on this triangle is 5. And with that, you have your uh, three needed ratios. Uh, just a heads up before I say goodbye to you. In the next video, you will want to have a calculator with you that has the sine and cosine and tangent features on it. Your computer probably has this calculator under uh, accessories, even if you don't have one. But it's a lot quicker to deal with one that's a standalone calculator. But I uh, hope you can uh, practice some and, and get these trig vocab terms under your fingers, under your belt, in your brain because uh, they come up a lot and will be coming up a lot, especially in the next few days.